All right, we're going to now head over to U.S. President Joe Biden, who's going to give his comments on the latest inflation figures out of the United States. All right, so we're going to be getting those, those, that footage any moment now. But what you just saw, of course, live footage from Congress. Uh, of course, that was the caretaker CEO of FTX, uh, John J. Ray III. Okay, here's John, President Biden right now. As gas prices fall. Gas prices are now lower than they were a year ago, and half the gas stations selling gas at, are selling gas at $3.09 or less. The most common price for gas stations across the country is $2.99. The decline in gas prices giving consumers a break. They need helping them keep uh, our economy going. We have a two-car family, they're saving hundreds of dollars a month. It's a big deal. Today's report contains another piece of good news. Food inflation has slowed last month, providing much-needed relief for millions of families at the grocery store. This is welcome news for families across the country as they get ready for the holiday celebrations and for family dinners. It's also important that we put today's news in a broader context. When I took office, we inherited a nation with a pandemic raging and an economy that was reeling. We acted quickly and boldly to vaccinate the country and to put a, in place a, a new economic strategy. A strategy built on an economy that was based on from the bottom up and the middle out. Now, 21 months later, we can see how our, our economic plan is working. We've added every single month, every single month of my presidency, we've added jobs total of 10,500,000 new jobs. 750,000 of them are manufacturing jobs. Where is it written, as I've heard me say it before, and I apologize for repeating it, where is it written that America can't lead the world again, once again, in manufacturing? And by the way, remember I talked at length about the need to continue to invest in research and development. Look what's going on from the Department of Energy and the nuclear front. There's a lot of good news on the horizon. The unemployment rate is down to 6.4% when I was sworn in, down from 6.4% when I was sworn in. It's now 3.7%, near a 50-year low. We've done all of this while lowering the federal deficit in the two years we've been in office, $1.7 trillion. Let me say that again, $1.7 trillion. We've lowered the federal debt. No administration has ever cut that, the deficit that much. Now, inflation is coming down as well. Prices of things like televisions and toys are going down. It's good news for the holiday season. Used car prices fell for the fifth month in a row. New car prices didn't go up this month. That savings is critical to so many families. It gives them just a little bit of breathing room for the holiday season. And all of this means that for the last several months, wages have gone up more than prices have gone up. Wages have gone up more than prices have gone up. I want to be clear, it's going to take time to get inflation back to normal levels as we make the transition to a more stable and steady growth. But we could see setbacks along the way as well. We shouldn't take anything for granted. But what is clear is that my economic plan is working and we're just getting started. My goal is simple, get price increases under control without choking off economic growth. Bring inflation down while keeping our labor market resilient. Build an economy from the bottom up and the middle out, an economy with good jobs, good wages, and for the long run, not a boom or bust economy. Because of my plan, we're beginning to see historic investments that are leading companies to invest hundreds of billions of dollars. Let me say that again, hundreds of billions of dollars to build semiconductor factories and other advanced manufacturing right here in America. It's going to create tens of thousands of good paying jobs in the years ahead. And by the way, a significant number of these jobs are expected to be jobs that pay an average of $125,000 a year. Many don't require a college degree, so things are looking up. So what's next? Because of my plan, we're taking powerful interest to lower, uh, powerful actions to lower prescription drug costs and health insurance premiums and energy bills. In just a few weeks, starting in January, families will get a little more breathing room. They've been told for some time since we passed the legislation that we're going to be able to lower the price of drugs. Let me give you just one example. Coming January 1, seniors with diabetes on Medicare are going to pay no more than $35 a month for a prescription of insulin. Up to now, they've been paying as much as $400 a month. 
That's a genuine savings for seniors. This matters so many families with loved ones who have diabetes and rely on insulin to survive, going from an average of $400 down to $15 or $35 a month. In January, they won't have to choose between paying their insulin, paying for their insulin, and in many cases, putting food on the table. It matters. It's real savings to people, and it's just about to kick in. The same is true from health care to clean energy. By taking action, we're making real progress in strengthening and stabilizing our economy, giving Americans across the country some breathing room in the process. Look, I know it's been a rough few years for hardworking Americans and for small businesses as well. And for a lot of folks, things are still pretty rough. But they're bright spots all across America where we're beginning to see the impact of our economic strategy. And we're just getting started. I've said it again, I've never been more optimistic about America's future. And today's news gives me another reason to be optimistic about that future. We're building a better America, an economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the top down. When the, when the poor have a shot, middle class do well, the wealthy always do very well. We just have to keep going. I know we can get this done. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops, and I'll take questions. I, I'm going to be seeing you all a little later this afternoon. I'm not taking any questions right now. Thank you very much. Can you say when you expect prices to get back to normal, Mr. President? I hope by the end of next year, we're much closer, but I can't make that prediction. I just, I'm convinced they're not going to go up. I'm convinced they're going to continue to that. Do you plan to veto the NDAA over the VAX requirement?